Greetings, Dr. Mark Winton here from the Department of Criminal Justice at the University of Central Florida. And in this video, I'd like to mention a few things about uh, terrorism research. One of the big questions that we have, especially if we're focusing on prevention, is what works? What works in what specific situations with a particular group? And that's real important that we differentiate what works and what doesn't work as far as our interventions are concerned. And of course, that can change over time. So we have to um, really conduct more research and begin to build the knowledge bases where we have um, the current knowledge level of, of what works and what doesn't to implement those particular projects or programs. And what we find, interestingly enough, is that our ideas range from the micro, individual, small group all the way to the macro, societal, cultural uh, changes that we might um, address. We can review community-based programs which would focus on uh, preventing uh, terrorism from um, for, or preventing terrorist groups from forming in the first place through a variety of community-based uh, interventions. And this may involve several institutions in that uh, area. We also uh, have seen some research on risk assessment and how uh, that might be used, recognizing, of course, the limitations of any interventions. You know, how do we uh, discourage terrorism from occurring? And then how do we offer protections to um, prevent uh, terrorism? And how much effort do we uh, focus on um, regarding the crime versus the criminal, or both? And, and so we get into a lot of, of these debates. One of the things that we have seen and certainly in your papers, we have seen that there's been a lot of change that has occurred in the last several years. And um, things uh, may seem a lot more complex. Uh, rapid change, uh, technological innovations, all this starting to add up. So we're looking at, for example, artificial intelligence and robotics and a a uh, terrorist group online recruiter that could be generated from artificial intelligence. So we are beginning to see some different models emerge that we have to address. A, a lot of the changes I've seen in the last 35 years of teaching at the university level have, have been profound. And, and I think the last five has hit me even harder. I don't know, maybe it's due to aging, or maybe it's due to the fact that, you know, there's all these uh, changes that have occurred in a short period of time, or a combination. But um, it's much more difficult to keep up in the literature, to, um, you know, focus attention uh, on several different areas. And one of the situations I found myself in over the years was um, trying to present criminologically based theories uh, at first on genocide and then later on terrorism. One of the uh, things that I've done and you know certainly you've probably seen this either in the articles or videos that I've posted is, um, is I've applied violentization theory to terrorism. I did a presentation a couple years ago titled can violentization theory explain terrorism? And I believed that indeed it could. And I still believe that. And so taking Lonnie Athens' work on violentization theory, I started to think about some areas that I might need to spend some more attention on. For example... I wondered, does violentization theory account for different types of terrorist groups? 
And I started to think about how the age at radicalization, the age where terrorist ideas and belief systems um, begin to take hold, how that is relevant. What's, you know, what's the onset in that regard? And, and how does the lone wolf terrorist um, sit out there in regards to the violentization process versus a larger group? I also wondered if mental health status had anything to do with it. But one of the areas where I felt a limitation, I felt I lacked knowledge, I felt a deficiency running through my own head, was using violentization theory to explain online radicalization, an online process of socialization of terrorists, especially in the lone wolf cases. And it wasn't until recently that I started to put this together as just some general idea, some theorizing. One of the things in the academic setting, you know, you might see me sitting there with about four or five articles, a couple books, a pad of paper and a pen for a couple hours at a coffee shop, drinking a cup of coffee. Years ago, it would have been a chocolate chip muffin. Now, probably bran or um, something uh, healthy. But I was theorizing, theorizing at the time. And you, you tell people that, say, well, you, what did you do today? Well, I spent a couple hours theorizing. You know, and only other theorists, I think, appreciate that. Like, wow, well, you know, what, what, what is the outcome? Other people are like, what, what? You wasting time there? And, no. And, and that was the whole thing, is I was trying to pull it together, trying to put it together. And now I started to get some more ideas, and I think a lot of that was generated from th this semester. I got some really uh, good ideas from your case studies that focused on the online envir environment and the socialization process and the effects of social media. Uh, just some wonderful ideas. I thank you all for in, in, in your papers, you, you know, I started to think, yeah, that I, I, I think there might be some potential there in applying violentization theory, Lonnie Athens theory, violentization theory, to the online radicalization process. Unfortunately, I don't have a presentation today on that topic. Got my notes here from my previous presentation, but that was on the actual physical group or the person um, who was not online. And um, so I'm thinking, I got myself a summer project now I can work on uh, looking at this. Wh which means that maybe it will make sense and I'll put something together. Maybe I'll make a YouTube video. Maybe six months later, I have that YouTube video posted. And you're always welcome to watch it, of course, if you have that interest. That I know the course will end pretty soon, and um, one of the things is that I'll keep researching, I'll keep reading, and I know many of you will as well, and, and I'll keep making YouTube videos, hopefully uh, with new material and ideas. And, and so I, I guess I wanted to make this video to point out that... Um, you know, it never ends. We're always uh, finding new problems to solve and um, uh, trying to, you know, integrate theories and data analysis strategies and um, that I know it may seem just like, yeah, ordinary every day that we have this whole social media and online environment. But when I entered the field 35 years ago, that did not exist. And so, you know, I'm wondering, like I said, are you going to have an artificially intelligent, robotic, online recruiter hanging out among a ter t hanging out with terrorist groups in the online environment that actually works? Or do we already have that? Or are we going to have that soon? And, and that's another thing I also found, found that... Um, I tend to predict that, well, this might occur in 10 years, and then it occurs like in three or four years. And um, 
thinking, okay, how did I get that wrong? I got some of it right, but the time frame. So the onset of all this has been a mystery to me as well, especially when I started to study on onset um, of violence among genocide perpetrators. The criminal justice theories I had been taught, I had studied, I learned, I taught to others, did not seem to apply, and so I had to look at rapid onset violentization processes. So there's still a lot of work to be done, and I know some of you are saying, that Dr. Winton, he uh, is getting himself some job security there, um, coming up with new ideas, new areas to explore, and that's really not, not the case. I actually have an interest in this and very motivated to, to find answers uh, to these uh, uh, questions. Knowing that I don't know right now, I don't have a sufficient response if you were to ask me, does violentization theory explain online radicalization? I don't know. But I hope to have a better idea about that in the future. So we're always adding to our existing models, developing new ones. New situations occur. Uh, rapid change takes place. And we try to make sense of this all. And I think that's what we've tried to do, hopefully, you know, this semester. And so we've come out with a lot more knowledge, but also we may have a lot more questions we didn't have before. But that's not necessarily a negative thing. That's actually, you know, positive intellectual growth there. So um, I can tell you today, I've made already maybe five or six videos just trying to get it right to my satisfaction. And for some reason, uh, the first set did not. I started out with just making videos on prevention of terrorism following specific PowerPoints, um, um, you, you know, um, uh, ideas uh, on a PowerPoint and not really expanding too much. I said, no, I don't want to do that. So all what I did is I put down all my ideas from those uh, several videos I made that were floating around. And this is all I have my, from my notes, not much. Here, just some ideas um, generated uh, with the assistance of a strong cup of coffee and um, then put it together here. And, and so I think that's one of the, the features I've been trying to stress is, is that there's no right answer. There are multiple perspectives. It's important to evaluate all those and to find out what works in what situations with um, what particular population, and also to um, consider outside of our area to read materials from anthropology, from sociology, from political science, from uh, psychology, um, and, and security studies, and, um, and, and, and so forth. A, a wealth of in information. See where they diverge, see where they overlap, see what we can use and borrow. And, and so hopefully, um, you know, that becomes a useful uh, technique or tool as well. So I'm going to wrap this up because I decided I'd go under 20 minutes, but I'm actually going to go under 15 minutes here. Uh, but this video is basically just kind of looking at thinking about all this. Thank you.